Well, I'm about to be joined by Dr. Basham Mukherjee. At point, if I could, you work on the front line. You're 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 a GP, right? Is this the answer? It seems to me like we're we're throwing money at people who simply make bad lifestyle choices. This is absolutely not the answer, in my opinion. We know that Ozempic and some of these weight loss drugs, they have their own problems, you know. You're introducing, essentially, side effects into the mix of an already whole range of uh, health problems that some of these people have. But more so, we have to think about the fact that this uh, current proposed idea is only for five years. Mm. It's a five-year trial. They're not, um, you know, thinking about the long-term effects of this drug and also the fact that once you take these drugs off, if they have not got the right health education, the right financial education to sustain this lifestyle, they're going to go back to square one. Does the NHS have a problem with mollycoddling the obese? And I'll tell you why I say that. When it comes down to smoking, they just ban smoking outdoors. They tax you to high heaven. If it's boozing, they whack, they whack up beer duty, whatever you're. You get much more of the stick, much less of the carrot. When it comes to obesity, oh, they're too, they're too afraid to offend fat people. And so they're, they're basically bribing them to do what they should be doing by order. Yes, and, and what, what you've got to understand is that it's not just the case of um, bribing them, you know, it's also setting the wrong precedent, telling them that actually the only option that's left for you is drugs, medication, mm. and, and not trying to look at what's causing this obesity epidemic that's happening. And to say that, you know, we have to do this, we have to put this much amount of money in because this is how much money is spent on um, obesity and the fact that loads of people with obesity don't work. I don't believe that. I have family members who are obese, who work. There are people who are very, very, they've got lots of health conditions mm. who work. I think it's an attitude problem, if anything. Well, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, the idea that these, what, how many thousand people are going to be doing it for, for three years and 50% employed, 50% unemployed, I suspect at the end of the five years they'll be much slimmer and they'll still be unemployed because actually it is not to do with how fat they are. It's not to do with that. It's to do, as you say, with attitude. I think a lot of people would agree with common sense that it's not a state of body, it's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. And if we medicalise, if, if we make um, obesity a medical condition that needs to be treated rather than actually just a state of mind that needs to be broken out of, then we're in, in effect endorsing the continued um, dependency of obese people on benefits. We don't actually move forward without saying, yes, this is a medical condition, here's your medicine, and therefore it's, it's not your fault, it's a disease. And I think that's a problem. It should be about lifestyle choices and making better ones. But how do we encourage people to do that? We're scared of saying boo to a goose when it comes to obesity. It's difficult because at the moment we've got an Ozempic, we go V shortage, and that's exactly what we're ha having to do with a lot of the patients that come in to see me and the GP. I have to tell them, I'm sorry, I don't think it's a good idea for you to pay £60 per injection or pay, pay this much money when you haven't got the funds. If you, if you, let's have a chat. Let's have a chat about what you can do about your current lifestyle. Let's talk about diet. Unfortunately, 10-minute appointments are just not good enough to, to do that, to address this. So mm. I, my personal viewpoint would be, I would love to have longer with my patients to have those conversations, yeah. to get to know what's really driving their food addiction, but what's really listen? driving. Do you think they'd listen? You'd be surprised, okay. you'd be surprised. A lot of people, I mean, I, I, you know, Obesity, you know, as much as it is a state of mind, it is a multi-morbid condition. Mm -hmm. People with obesity, they struggle with mobility, they struggle mm -hmm. with joint pains, they struggle with um, sleep, so many different problems. You know, they, they struggle with unable to breathe during the night time, they snore, so they end up um, having really poor sleep. So we know that there's a multifactorial problem here. And absolutely, when a doctor does give them the time there are loads of people who are willing to take that and take that on board, but it, it, we have to have the time to do but that. Why should the state pay for that? Why should taxpayers like you or I, who aren't obese, you know, have to fork out all these endless, it'd be millions and millions of pounds? Well, Martin, because because we're paying for it anyway. Yeah. We're paying for diabetes. We're paying for. I mean, I, I just wanted to ask Dr. Uh, Mukherjee. The thing that I find most upsetting is when you see overweight children, little mm. children. Um, and you see them, you know, with 
mums and dads and grannies and what have you in the supermarket and you see a trolley full of absolute rubbish and you want to scream at them and say, please, can't you see what's happening? And there is this... I think you know. But you, you can't have... criticise anybody. We, we've well, created yeah. a society where any idea of shame but I won... is, is, is yeah. forbidden. You're, you were talking about. We are basically saying to, to these people, uh, "It's not your fault." Well, actually, now I know that there are some conditions that cr- uh, yes, create there obesity. But there the, are, but, it but is the a vast majority. I say vast. So many but the vast majority of it's, those who are vast are, in fact, responsible for their own health, it's their own of, lifestyle, but and their own decisions. And the, and that's but they are responsible for them. I think we've got to move away from the conversation about blame and talk yes. about accountability. Yes. Um, I know that, I mean, obesity, diabetes runs in my family. I know how difficult mm. it is once you're addicted to food how, and certain types of food. How do you have it's accountability really difficult if you don't have blame? To, um, to come out of that. Okay. However, however, where the government is ready to essentially fund these companies, mm-hmm. Ozempic is essentially a company that's, uh, yeah. you it's know, far, if they're willing to pharma, pay them this, this money, I think the government does have power, therefore, to um, control the supermarkets and how the advertising is done, mm-hmm. how and where the food is kept. Mm-hmm. Um, how, you know, let's, go, let's talk about the fact that lo- those are these, uh, you know, the argument is that we're, we're trying to get these people back to work. Uh, so guessing that probably on some kind of benefit at the moment, bring back food stamps. Bring back food stamps yeah. that allow you it's to buy healthy really foods. Yes. It would happen yeah. if you yeah. tried to do that. OK, we have to leave it there. Dr. Busher, Basher, <laughs> Mukherjee, and, of course, Joe and Gawain. And it's an, a, a great point. Food for thought. £280 million worth of investment was announced by Eli Lilly yesterday. And guess what? They happen to manufacture the drug in question. Big Pharma, once again, are they pulling the strings? That's